What is this eye accessing cues? Like, is that like a secret access or to the eyes or what is that? Uh, it, it's a secret access to the brain <laughs> through the eyes. So okay. yes. And as you, of course, know, you're, you're well versed in all of this, of course. And uh, it's something that gives us the ability to uh, look at someone in a normal during a normal conversation, a quote unquote normal conversation, because you yeah. have to guide them a little bit. Uh, but you can watch their eyes during that conversation and get a glimpse into what they are thinking during the conversation based on where they are looking. Yeah. Uh, there are six locations that we use with eye accessing cues, up to the right, over to the right, and down to the right, and then same on the left. There are three on the left also. Yeah. So when we're looking at someone, they're going to potentially be looking in one of those six directions with their eyes while you're talking with them and while they're answering. And based on the subject matter that they're pondering at that time, you can get an idea of whether they're telling the truth about it or not whether they're making it up or not, uh, yeah. whether they uh, actually had that experience or whether they're imagining having that experience. So you can get these types of insights into someone's brain just from watching the location that their eyes move while you're talking with them. Is it, is it the same for everybody? I mean, are we so, uh, you know, we know that word automaton, and are, are we so like robots, everybody's the same every time, all the time, in every way, or how is that working? Uh, no, and that's not the case at all. In fact, uh, there's quite a bit of uh, research that's been done on this uh, that, uh, that does, has uh, unfortunately revealed some uh, inconsistencies with it. And that research was presented to people involved in NLP. This all happened in the 1980s, and uh, it's been revised since then to say that uh, it, it isn't always with everyone the same way. In fact, you have to look at the individual and look for patterns with the individual. So at this point, I would consider eye access and cues at this point in the research and our understanding of it. Uh, I would look at eye, eye access and cues as a starting point mm -hmm. for you to begin to understand the individual. Uh, some people are oppositely oriented, as, as it's called. In other words, you learn all the rules for them, you look at them, and they're actually doing the opposite. So when you think they're telling a lie, they're telling the truth, for example. So what I recommend to cut through all of that is to calibrate. You need to calibrate with each individual person. You need to ask them a series of questions that will find out for them how they are oriented. Okay. Someone looks up to the left, they're remembering something. And when someone looks up to the right, they are creating something. Okay. We start with that premise. It's not always the case for yeah. everyone. It's not set in stone. Yeah, got you. Exactly. So it's probably gotten a lot of use from uh, people, male or female, mm -hmm. in a relationship of any kind. Uh, we shouldn't define that either. And mm -hmm. uh, figuring out whether or not their uh, counterpart has been uh, faithful or not. You know, where were you last night? Well, you say mm -hmm. you were at at, uh, at so and so's house. Well, what what was it like there? Or what was what song was playing on the radio there? Something like that. Mm -hmm. There's also been some uh, some uh, talk about this being used with law enforcement. Um, yeah. Uh, again, I would I would think that the cases would be limited because of the calibration required, because you wouldn't just go in assuming that it works. You would have to calibrate it to make sure you have a consistent tool. A lot mm -hmm. of times people assume that hypnosis and NLP are you know used by law enforcement, but um, uh, there are actually very strong restrictions on both because mm -hmm. of uh, sometimes the data collected from them being invalid or inadmissible or just not very helpful. So as long as you calibrate, you'll know you have a tool. And I would imagine that it can be useful in, in quite a number of situations. Wasn't that absolutely fantastic? I'm sure that you found a lot of information in this very short video, just so maybe like four or five, six minutes, however long it was. But that is not all. You can have access to the entire presentation of this amazing speaker, plus 40 more other presentations and speakers and you can have access 
for life. You can have access to the video recording, to the audio recording, to the swipe files, to the transcripts, to all of the bonuses and the special gifts that all of the speakers and presenters and also the organizers are offering in the premium pass package. So if you like this, if you want more, make sure to sign up below for the premium pass and have lifetime access to everything. I'm sure it'll be one of the best investments you've ever made in your life, in yourself, in your practice, in your health, and also with working with clients. So go ahead, click on the button below, sign up.